What's up everyone? This is the second part of my keyboard series. The first part was basically just going through all my keyboards and this one is actually about the hand wire and how we actually make it click buttons and act like a keyboard. So I found a lot of the guides were very helpful in setting up the wiring but it was a little bit difficult to figure out how to actually make this do things and we'll go through both steps here but we'll spend less time on the wiring and more time on how you actually make this run. So first let's talk about the hardware components inside of a hand wire and <clears throat> of course you're going to need some switches. So inside here I have cherry switches, brown and greens. You're going to need diodes which are on the back over here. Oh. Come on camera, I believe in you. There you go. The diodes, those are the red and black things. And those are gonna be what in the matrix helps tell which key you're typing. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. All right, so you're gonna need some wire. You're gonna need a few lengths of different wire because you're gonna run your rows with wire and then, or your columns with wires, sorry, your rows or your diodes, your columns with wire. And then you're also gonna use wire to go from your switches to your board. Cool, so you're gonna need a microcomputer, <clears throat> and in this case I'm using a Pro Micro. Common uh, boards will be Pro Micros, the Elite C, which is a USB-C version of this, Teen Cs, and I have seen a few guys with ESPs, which is really awesome because they use Wi-Fi firmware, but I don't think that normal programming works on it. You have to actually set up your own IDE for it and everything, and we're not gonna go into that in this video, but maybe we will in the future. And last but not least is the plate. Um, this one is 3D printed. I will put the STLs or the Thingiverse link in here in the description probably. But uh, yeah, so you can make a plate out of anything. I've seen cardboard plates with hot glue. Uh, hot glue is a great to use when you're making these because sometimes you're, you know, you can't cut perfect squares or whatever to hold your switches and hot glue is not conductive. But uh, for this build, we used a 3D plate that was a remix of some designs, and the switches fit really nicely. So I actually hadn't, didn't have to use glue on anything, which is pretty awesome. All right, so let's talk more about the keyboard and what makes it tick. So there are quite a few good guides on wiring, and we'll definitely link those in the description. But the basic idea is you're going to have to create a matrix, and each matrix will have a diode connected to one of the pins on the switch, and the other pin will be connected in a column with the other switches in that column. So the rows of diodes will be soldered together and then you'll solder down your columns. And we make the columns by using a vice grip strip wire. These are vice wire strippers and they allow us to kind of strip wires right in the middle. So here's a wire. I'm just gonna put it anywhere in there and then just boop and you'll get a nice little there it goes. So you have a nice little split in your wire. Whoop, this way. And so after you have your rows and your columns wired, you basically have your matrix done, but you need to connect that matrix to the microcomputer. And that part's a little bit harder for me just to talk about. So we're going to put the camera directly on the back of this and we'll walk through the wiring through a screen capture. I'll even show you how to set up the, like the programs correctly and hopefully get you started on your own hand wire keyboard. So let's just go and jump into that. Hey everyone, for part two I probably sound a little different because I switched mics, but who cares? So there are many ways to program your microcomputer and I found this way to be pretty easy. Some people say that it's outdated, but I think that if you're just doing a simple single layer, this is a really easy way to do it, and we're just gonna go through that. So the two websites are kbfirmware.com, and the other one is keyboardlayouteditor.com, which you can find right here. And the first thing we have to do is design our keyboard to look like our matrix. So there are a few different presents in here, so you can, like, a presents is a different type of layout in case you're using a different layout. We're using a default 60% as our base, and we're only using the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all the keys we aren't using, and we'll just come back when they're gone. Is that? Things like that. Is it on the same? 
So we're gonna add one key. I like this key to be this size, but I want it to be moved over a bit. So let's go to 4.25. Cool, and then I want this to be a control key, but we'll change that later. We'll add one more key. And this is gonna be the space key. I'm gonna make this 7.5. I think it fits still, it does. And we're gonna space it over just to 0.5. Cool, that looks great. We can actually move this key over just a little to four so it's even. Oh, no. Cool. All right, so now we have the layout of our board and we need to set these to be control and space. So we're gonna go into here and then we're gonna make the top legend control I'm going to look into the raw data and you can see now this is a control key it matches this key right here so that's cool and then this other one we want to be space perfect and this looks perfect for the left hand side of our keyboard we'll go to raw data and this we're going to copy all of this and go to KB firmware paste it in here and import it First thing we're gonna have to do is set up the matrix to match the actual matrix that we have on our board. The rows are probably gonna be correct because those are just across, but you can see the columns are a little bit snake-like and I can already tell that some of these columns don't match up with my own. I think the first thing we can do is flip this board because our shift caps lock and tab keys are on the right hand side and now this is like a better representation of the image that we have on the screen and my actual board immediately i can see that this shift key is on the wrong column they have it on the one column but it should be on the zero column so it's pretty easy you just go back like this and bam it puts it on the zero column so now these are always correct to their columns, so you don't really have to worry about the top keys. It's more about these keys in here. And right about here, I think they're all gonna be one back because I, this is how I wired them. I think they're all one back until the second to last row. Cool, yeah, that's that one. And then this one is a three. This is where it gets a little weird. This one is that, and it's like this. All right, so now our KB firmware matrix matches our actual matrix on our board. And we have to connect this matrix up to the microchip. So we're gonna jump into the pins tab and go from there. And I've already associated them, but basically the way it works is zero, one, two, three, four are the rows, zero, one, two, three, four. And the columns are the same, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six and you're gonna designate them to whatever pins you wanna solder them onto the board. And I found this image is a great reference. The numbers correspond other than the P's, you just remove the P's and then, so the bottom one is B5 and that goes to one I rows, then B4, E6, and just going up and I do the same for the other side. And that's basically how I designate where I'm gonna solder the rows and columns onto my Pro Micro chip. Once you have set all of your rows and columns correctly, then we can move into the most important part, which is downloading the hex. And we're not gonna configure LED pins right now, but in a future video, maybe we will if there's video gets enough traction. So we're gonna see key maps. We don't have anything. This looks great. We're not gonna use another layer right now. The macros are fine. Nothing, not gonna change quantum. Settings, we only have half a keyboard, that makes sense, and we don't use the soft reset key, kind of important. And you can save this, which will save a JSON if you want, but it's not as important as the hex file. So we're gonna download the hex file. All right, now that we've downloaded our hex, we can flash that hex onto our Pro Micro, and most people use QMK Toolbox to do this. 
and I'm gonna show you how to do it this way. It's super easy. But the very first time I was flashing this Pro Micro, I wasn't able to use a QNK toolbox because it didn't show up. My Pro Micro didn't show up in when I connected it, and that means I couldn't flash it using it. We'll show the way that I was able to get it to work after QMK, but let's quickly just jump into this and how it works. So I'm gonna turn on the camera. We'll move this over here. So first things first, let's plug it in. Cool. And we're going to just cover that green LED because I know it's really annoying. A little clip. Okay, cool. Awesome. So there are two pins that you have to get really familiar with on this board when you're flashing it and that's the ground and reset pins they're like labeled on every single board but if you're looking top down it's they're the second and third pins on the right side so when you touch these together you're going to put it into flash mode and when you touch them once they're going to go into flash mode for one second and when you touch them twice they're going to go into flash mode for eight seconds and that's effectively the amount of time that you're going to have in order to click this flash button in order to get the code on this board. So first things first, we're going to select our hex. So we're in documents, keyboard layouts, my half hex, which is what we just downloaded from KB firmware. And we're going to unplug my main keyboard so that it doesn't accidentally get overridden. And you can see so that I had a Kibio q z Rev2. Now it's disconnected. So we're going to flash, set this board into flash mode. There it is. And we're just going to click flash. And you have about eight seconds to do that. And that is it. And the crazy part is this is the exact same code that we're going to run. going to show you how you can basically come up with this command yourself so first things first is we're actually gonna to have to use Arduino in this but we don't need any sort of special like script or anything this is just the one that I have it open last what we really want is the ports so when we look at ports right now we can see what ports are open and there's only one port open so I'm gonna X out of this flash my board I'll turn my camera back on so we're going to flash the board double tap it and now we're going to check what this is and we can see COM1 and now COM11 and in a few seconds we should see that COM11 drop off alright that's what happened so we know that COM11 is the the reset column when we hit this and that's the one that we're going to be looking at so that's we're we're going to replace the com5 with so we'll take this go here and we're going to say com5 well we actually want com11 and then c avr or i guess we should, we can go through this code dash p at mega 32u4 that's the pro micro this is now the COM port that we're going to look at so we don't override anything we don't want to. AVR109 is the bootloader, I believe, or the actual code that is going to be how it's going to be uploaded onto this chip. Not exactly sure. Don't quote me on that. And then the last part is what we actually want to flash onto it. So once you have AVR dude installed, you can open up your command prompt, so just CMD. And we can actually just step all the way through it. So CD documents, because that's where I kept it. And then we can go CD, it's keyboard layouts. And inside of keyboard layouts, we can see my half hex. Make that a little bit bigger. And now we can start using this program. I'm just gonna type it out, avrd.exe dash p at mega 32 u4 dash p com oops, 11 dash c evr 109 
Ah. Dash U. Flash W. And now we're going to point to this hex right here. So it's my half hex dot hex. And bam, this is this is the command. It's going to say, can't open this device because we haven't flashed the board again. So it's currently closed. So let's reflash the board. And run that command one more time. And bam, we'll move this over to the other side. And this executed part right here, all of this, this is the exact same as this. It literally does the exact same thing. All of this stuff is the same it, when we run it from command line as when we run it from QMK. You can even see the sizes are exactly the same, 17,518, 17,518. So it really doesn't matter. And I would honestly always use QMK toolbox because it's a GUI and it's easier and we are basically just using GUIs. So why do I want to go into the command line anyways? But it is nice to know that if your, if your board doesn't pop up here, maybe because it's just like a little bit bricked or a little corrupted, that there is this other way to do it if you can actually see what port it is and yeah, so using Arduino and uh, the command that we actually take from here, it is easy to do it yourself in command line. And those are the two ways that you can flash your board. Last thing that you probably want to do is test your keyboard layout. So in KB firmware, do they have a tester in here? I don't think they have a tester in here. One of these has a tester. Um, okay, maybe we have to go to another one. QMK configurator. All right. QMK config is a more complicated way to get a hex file. And you can build your keyboard in here. And it's absolutely great. I think that KB firmware is maybe a little easier for the first timer, but eventually moving into QMK configurator is probably what you wanna do. What we're gonna use this for is test keyboard input and we're just gonna hit all these keys and see if they're showing up the way they should be. I think they are, is that T? Yeah, it is, nice. Cool, nice. Looks like all these keys work. Oh, I should probably turn this on. So we're just gonna make sure all of these keys work. And let's go, this should be T, nice, there we go. This is G, nice. Nice, 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 this is all looking great. Sorry, my hands are getting in the way, some of these. Boop. We're in that. All right, and then moment of truth, this one should be a control, and that's a control key. Awesome, we did it. We programmed half a keyboard, congratulations. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.